What's up everybody, I'm the Bat Otter and we're back with another review of the first volume of Berserk Deluxe Edition. Again, this is a real thick book, lots of volumes, lots of chapters in it, lots of good stuff to go over. So, in the last one I did, I finished up the Guardians of Desire arc. It was a pretty short one, all things considered, uh, compared to other arcs in the series. But, I was rereading it, looking over it, and I don't think I went over this in the last review. But I wanted to say that uh, towards the end, obviously, uh, this guy gets killed by... He gets executed. And I mentioned this a few times, that Miura succeeds in making you care about somebody in a very short amount of time. Whether it was the little girl, even this guy, who, who got a little bit more time to develop. But whatever the case, he's very good at setting things up. Giving you a setting. Uh, conveying all the ideas necessary to make the story satisfying. And if you hear anything in the background, that's a dryer, drying clothes. Uh, and what I want to point out is one of the things that he excels at in clearly setting the mood, uh, the time of day is, you know, it's manga, so it's going to be in black and white, right? But in order to display that it's nighttime, I mean, he puts the moon there, right? But he grays out the entire town all the way into the horizon where you see the faded woods, the forest, Obviously, he doesn't illustrate everything that would be over-rendering it, but it looks real. I mean, all the way to the mountainscape in the background, you could say that those are mountains, the clouds, just the light in the sky, whatever it may be. I mean, the perspective on that is really excellent, actually, now that I'm looking at it, <laughs> getting carried away. So he sets a scene at night, they're taking out the bodies, but this right here, just the silhouette of Guts standing over this poor guard who's about to get murdered completely blacked out in the shadow he looks so large and menacing almost like a darth vader right but he has the one eye glowing ready to do business i mean what a an incredible incredible menacing shot just to establish guts overwhelming presence over some of these people uh and, of course, he gets possessed by spirits at the end. So, we pick up the next one, and I'll see how far I get into it. Again, establishing shot, the castle, because that's where Guts is going. There he is down there. He's got a long way to go, but he's going to square up with the Count. He decided he's going to take that guy out. Coming up, we get the intro. Manga have all those intro pages because of the different publication format. Uh, and we get the Count walking through the castle. He has Puck in his hands, and Puck, unfortunately, is remembering the man that he tried to save, very regretful, wishing that he could have done more. And we get introduced to the Count's daughter, who is very indifferent. She doesn't like it. The Count is clearly trying to win her over. Something happened between them, they don't have a great relationship, and despite the Count's evil nature, he still loves his daughter. That's still a pure, innocent love, because you can even see with his reaction, where it's largely been indifferent, or he kind of likes the, the dark, the killing. He's very disappointed, he's very sad in himself that his own daughter won't even let her give him a hug or something like that. So, she goes, and Puck starts interacting, and obviously, the Count's not in a good mood. The priest doesn't like that. So we get a lot of contemplation, a lot of thoughts... And, uh, I think the Count realizes that Guts is coming for him. But, this guy earlier, you think that he's been beat, he comes right back. So we get another excellent fight scene between Guts and this guy. And so, like I said, I don't want anything spoiled for me, because I'm, I'm trying to read this series all the way in. But, Guts is totally human, right? I mean, this guy takes beatings like nothing and comes back from them, as if he has Wolverine's healing factor. So we get an excellent fight. Again, the way that Miura illustrates the, the tendrils, the tentacles, whatever you want to call them, moving so quickly, it, it's such a unique way of doing it. I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And of course, I mean, if I went by page by page, which I could do, just to point out all the nuances in the composition, I mean, we'd be here all day. I mean, these videos would be hours and hours and hours. Guts gets the upper hand, cuts him in half, or at least tries to, gets the blade through the, the, the guy, cuts him, chops him. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, you need to do a little bit more than chop him up. Because he just grows back. So that's what he did. <laughs> and he's all bloody now. Goes in. The guards are waiting for him. But he's being a little bit discouraged. Uh, 
He's kind of crazy. I like that. Puck talking over with the daughter. We get a lot of exposition about the relationship between her and the father. How ever since the day that the mother died, he's been murdering heretics, as he puts it. Uh, and he hasn't been the same since. Almost like he's become a monster. Wow. Uh, guts damaged, battle damaged already. Comes in, fights a bunch of knights. Like I said, fight scenes, they're great. You don't really need to know much about the fight scenes. I'd just be showing you every page at that point. Chops another big guy in half like it's nothing. Everybody is completely scared of him. And uh, he uses the priest to get to where he wants. The girl released Puck. Because she feels bad for having him. Uh, as we keep going, we keep going. Good artwork. Exposition. And we get a beautiful shot of Guts busting down the door. Trying to get the count. Kicks the guy in. Magnificent shot. Lots of movement. Lots of drama. And we get this beautiful, beautiful one of him draped in the cloak. A bloody sword. Bloody eye. It, just gorgeous. You could put that on a, a, a wall, you know, looking at that. Of course, we get the large setting for the impending fight that we're going to get between Guts and the Count. And we soon see... What is the Count's true form, which is the slug. Puck kind of picks up on it. He's going to come by. Uh, and we see this giant, nasty-looking slug monster thing uh, coming after Guts. He's going to have to fight it. But, unfortunately, it's a castle-wide battle, so the daughter has to get involved, which is really sad. Because Guts ends up completely annihilating the father in front of the daughter without any remorse i mean it gets dark man uh lots of good illustrations there i'm kind of you guys know me i'm winging it as i'm going through uh lots of good fight scenes excellent fight scene lots of detail onto the monsters as guts is absolutely chopping to bits uh keep going guts takes an unreasonable amount of punishment and survives but if this is the fight that i think it is which it is, uh, he takes a little bit too much punishment in this fight because it goes back to, you're immortal, you can't win this. And he's like, I don't care what I am, I'm going to kill you. Uh, and we get a little bit of the breaks. As the story progresses, we seem to get more and more into Guts' psyche. And of course, as the Golden Age uh, begins, we pretty much just get the entire backstory of Guts and a lot of the reasonings behind his character. But, I mean, once this guy gets the upper hand on Guts, he doesn't let it go. A lot of other fight uh, monsters, they get a hold of him, you know, they thrash him around for a while, and I mean, the way that Miura is able to illustrate the pain, the motion, boom, slamming his back straight into a wall, the blood coming out of him, the visceral look in his eye. I mean, the guy's in a lot of pain. You think, oh, maybe he's done, right? He's gonna get slammed a couple more times, but right here, he's still got the sword in his hand. You think, oh, he's going to say put. Swings him around some more. He looks half dead, but he's still got the sword. Has to swing him, swing him around some more. And he just completely annihilates Guts. The fact, I guess humans in this universe are a lot more versatile. Because you just get this ugly, nasty shot of Guts being strung upside down, bleeding, completely battered, and the monster standing right over him to be continued right and you get the next part of it and we continue to the next few chapters of guardians of desire this one's a bit longer i'll see almost at 10 minutes i'll probably stop here soon uh so yeah guts just having been defeated the guy's looming over him it's this real ugly shot and poor puck here all good a heart the guy's a stand-up guy but he's small so he stands up to him as he does they're toying with him, and it's not until uh, the daughter comes in that everything gets thrown off, because she's completely terrified of him now. He, he doesn't want her to see him like that, and it's it's bad situation, right? You see your father, he's a giant slug, what are you going to do? You're like 12 years old, what do you do, right? So this guy's pissed, understandably, not really, uh, and completely goes to annihilate Puck. He's not playing games anymore, right? But, boom, out of absolutely nowhere, gets hit by a bunch of throwing knives. 
just when you think Guts is out, he's wobbly, he's on shaky legs, he's completely battered and bruised, but he gets back up and he looks mad. I mean, the guy's going on rage alone at this point. Puck celebrates his return and uh, he he gives a nice little look, pretty much becoming the demon. You guys ever read Nietzsche? Uh, and he says, uh, if you want to stop me, you're going to have to crush my skull or pierce my heart just like you. Essentially saying, is that all you got? Uh, so, of course, he gets battered again, as he does. But what he does is gets the girl and uses her as a shield because the guy has no remorse for anything. He just wants to win. He doesn't care if anybody dies. And in doing so, he gets the upper hand, uses his arm, blasts this guy's face off, and puts his sword in his mouth because his arm is injured as you can see here broken hands that's not going to be important later he's pissed puts the sword in his mouth and when i saw this i absolutely loved it the the character that is pretty much a junkyard animal holding on for dear life doing anything to survive there's something so visceral about that emotion that really draws me to it and once again miura pulls absolutely no punches and guts charges cutting this man in half again as he always does with his sword in his mouth and if that's not the icing on the cake if that doesn't get you to be interested in this in front of the guy's daughter by the way which uh, he continues to nail in later as the sword falls out where he completely taunts the daughter he picks him up he shows him to her, and he gets that crazy look. The The way that Miura is able to illustrate emotion on the face of Guts on any of these characters, like I said, it, it's it's second to none. It, it's some of the best illustrating in the business whenever you really look at the emotion that he's able to display and in such short amounts of time, and he just starts torturing him uh, out of just this complete psychotic meltdown. And Puck gets in his way. He says, uh, if you get in the way, I'll kill you too typical guts and he's completely rubbing it in you get this shot of him there and what this is trying to do is it's trying to make you see it from guts perspective which is what i really like the uh what he was trying to do here it gives you a lot tougher blacks in the artwork as opposed to the more fine line work that he's accustomed to with the motion lines and in doing so it gives you this really what do you call it? Filtered, blurry view of reality, in at least in terms of the story. Illustrating that Guts is just seeing red at this point. He's gone. He's out. There's nothing that's going to stop him. The guy's pretty much as evil as the guy he's killing. Uh, and he's doing it, once again, right in front of the daughter. And th so much so that the blade breaks while he's stabbing him. Which is, again, all these little nuances here and there add to the the excellence of the storytelling until the blood gets on the behelet and you think what does that mean well it doesn't look like it's good because that's pretty creepy and we get this shot here of a very warped perspective warped reality again to give you an impression of something being uncomfortable it's unknown uh you don't want to be here it's not it's out of your control you can't really think of anything that's like it to put you completely out of your comfort zone and Guts reacts as he does and you get this great big build up to the great ones are coming and that's when you get the shot of the great ones Guts looking completely beaten looking up at them and you get this excellent shot that's a master class in perspective and composition all at the same time of all one two three four five of the great ones or the Guardians of Desire. That's where the credits go. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know this one wasn't as good as probably a couple of the last ones. But I will be having the rest of the story up in the near future. So, if you enjoyed that, like, subscribe, comment. I'd love to hear what y'all think of this part of Berserk. And follow me on Instagram, at the Bat Otter. Post all my artwork there. I'm an artist too. That's why I know so much about art. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed.